Someone said that 2024 would be the year that all lies would be exposed. And I am glad I stopped supporting this person long time ago. I knew something was wrong long, long time ago. But then when he disrespected me on his live, when I asked a legitimate question in the chat, he's going to call me a dummy. But who's the dummy now, Larry Reed? V. Terrell Hill, which worked who worked with Larry Reed for many years building the Larry Reed Show and the MBN Network came on live on YouTube and exposed some very disturbing information. He also apologized to his wife, Elisa Dunn, and also to Levantre Andrews for aiding and abetting and helping to cover up lies. And it's very disturbing because I am from the area that Larry Reed is from, and I also know his some of his family members. And I believe I met Larry Reed at a family reunion in Goldsboro at the time that I was living in a certain area and attending a certain church that his family member attends, which I also was mistreated and ran over uh, in that church because they also were covering and aiding and abetting certain people in the church that were doing scandalous things toward their wives and spouses. But Elisa all this time thought that her husband, Larry Reed, was cheating on her. And there was a time that they separated and divorced and remarried. She got in a, a same relationship with another woman in Florida for a time. And then she ended up coming back to Atlanta to live with Larry Reed and their two daughters. Larry Reed has done so much talk and damage and criticized and other pastors for being fake and phony and for taking advantage of people when all along he knew that he wasn't living right himself and was engaged in adulterous affairs with other men and also allegedly messing with children. Now, all you people paid all this money to Larry Reed and just basically made him rich. What is uh, Prophet Bernard Jordan going to do? Is something going on there too? Is something going on uh, with Manasseh as well? They dogged Tasha Kay and Levantre Andrews and tried to make it seem that they were lying. But all of the time, this is actually the truth. They also mistreated Sir William McCray because V. Terrell Hill was instrumental and destroying Will McRae's blog and destroying his website. And uh, McRae gave Reed opportunities to uh, assist him in his radio show in Atlanta. And Reed stabbed him in the back and, and basically kind of took over. They ambushed Will McRae and kind of took his place uh, as the church blogger. And we're also finding out from Vita Rail Hill that there was a romantic relationship between Shamako Bryant and Larry Reed. And Shamako Bryant married his cousin, who also is an alternative lifestyle. I always felt like that was a cover up. When you see people who are uh, in the alternative lifestyle and they marry people who are also in the alternative lifestyle, mostly that is a cover up. Uh, so that people will not think that they are uh, cursed by God or out of the scriptures. They do this for appearances sake so that people will accept them. So they will accept them as the traditional husband and wife because this is not going to be accepted. We find out from Vita Rail Hill that Shemako was very jealous of his relationship with Larry Reed. And Shemako is also instrumental and aiding and abetting and covering up Larry Reed's heinous acts and deeds. And so it comes to pass that uh, Daryl Moore, the cigar vlogger, who Larry Reed sued because the cigar vlogger was uh, interviewing people who had been harmed by Bishop George Bloomer who's from the area that I used to live also. And there, there's much I could say about Bishop Bloomer. And the Savar vlogger 
was trying to expose Larry Reed and Larry Reed made it seem like the cigar blogger was a liar. But now we're, and he, I believe it was him or his friend in California, someone in that crew that said is going to take someone in the close knit community around Larry Reed that's going to have to open their mouth and the close-knit community around Larry Reed is Shamak O'Brien, Vitorel Hill, Kendall, um, his wife, is going to take someone in that circle to open their mouth to expose Larry Reed because they have been covering, aiding and abetting, and covering his lies, and covering all their tracks. And now this has happened, what this person said. It has finally happened. V. Terrell Hill has receipts. He has audio clips. He has recordings of Larry Reed saying different things. He has text messages. So we have no choice. And it's just not fair how Larry Reed sued Cigar Vlogger. And basically, Cigar, uh, the Cigar Vlogger was forced to take all his video down about Larry Reed. And all those videos are true. So guard blogger Darren Moore, you need to go back to court and whatever th that was done need to be overturned because see now the truth has come out because V. Terrell Hill, which is a long time friend, associate, business partner, ex-lover, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, has now exposed Larry Reed. So whatever they did to you in court need to be overturned. People also talked about Bishop Lamar Whitehead when he was trying to team up with Tasha Kay. And um, Lamar Whitehead tried to sue Larry Reed and King Jives. Um, so we're finding out, what does Daryl Moore know about Larry Reed that we don't know? Come to find out, he was right all along and he knew what he was talking about. And this is what makes me so angry that these people come in the name of God. They do all this jumping and shouting and preaching and praising God. Uh, Larry Reed used to have a choir. His choir could sing. Uh, and the person that I know, his cousin. Yeah! Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's to Michael Bryant. Right Hallelujah. Like yes. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Ha, ha, ha. He's moving. Fire. 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 Call on me. Fire. Call on me. Fire. Burn. 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 Renew. Sanctify. Purify. Free. Free. Let me Ramosa. Red of all men. Messy the heart. Run the baba 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 Provision for his kindness. Oh, we owe him the praise. Hallelujah. For his mercy, his mighty acts, his good works. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha ha. For forgiveness. What singers and Shamako also used to sing in the group but he had hair there as well now just imagine you representing God allegedly you're a pastor preacher you're doing gospel singing you're married you have children and you're speaking in all these tongues and you're doing all this speaking in tongues and you licking and laughing and rolling around with, with someone that's the same as you and cheating on your wife. What happened to all that Holy Ghost and all those tongues? Or all those really fake tongues? These people buy these tongues in the mail because there ain't nothing to them. And they... Crucify the cross of Jesus Christ again by the life they live and the mockery and the hurt that they do to other people with their basement lives and their basement testimony and no test, their test line. They don't have a testimony, their test line and proffer line. Now let's look at the clip of V. Terrell Hill exposing Larry Reed. And of course, Larry Reed has already come on YouTube, and I'm sure he's put his rebuttal. But we're not buying it. Do you buy it? I know what it is to play a part in a network where victims were created. And to be honest with you, I didn't say anything at all. And it's one of my biggest regrets. It's the reason why I'm really doing this video. Specifically, there are two people that I carry in my heart because I should have spoke up and I didn't. And though I think it's 
too late to stir the waters now, I want to say to you two specifically, I am so sorry. It will be self-explanatory by the end of this episode why I needed to apologize to Lisa. And by the way, hi, my name is Vincent Terrell Hill. Some call me Buddha. Some call me V. Terrell Hill. And for some of you, you call me Elder Vincent Terrell Hill. I worked with Larry Reed from Larry Reed Live from 2003 to 2018. In that time, I was everything from a personal assistant, executive assistant. I traveled statewide and internationally. But most importantly, I am the creator and originator of the Larry Reed Live show. Throughout those 15 years, 13 years were spent in a sexual relationship with Larry Reed. For a while, I believed I was the only one, or rather, the only man. However, Larry made me aware after our sexual relationship was over, I wasn't. I will disclose the other men in the church he's had some sort of sexual relationship with outside of me as we move forward. Most of what I say in this video is provable. Everything else I saw with my own eyes are those directly connected to it told me. None of this is secondhand information. You did take my comb while I'm having the ears in your ass. So it's my students in you. Yes. While he was married, pastoring, traveling the road, working with me on Larry Reed Live. We maintained an ongoing sexual relationship that, to my knowledge, only he, Shamako Bryant, and myself was aware of from 2005 to approximately 2017 when I cut off the sexual relationship. Shamako didn't like our relationship. I know, but you love both of us. Which one decided him didn't like our relationship? More on Shamako later. Now you may ask, where did I get these audio clips from? Late night on January the 15th, 2023, Larry drove to my house to have a conversation with me months after him and I stopped communicating because he halted payment on an arrangement agreed upon for years of work I did during my 13 years of service with Larry the Breakthrough Church, Breakthrough Temple, and all of the iterations thereof, including Larry Live. If you remember January the 15th, 2023, you may also remember Levantre Andrews. He was being interviewed by Tasha Kay, premiering in parts on YouTube, but in full on her website that same night. That night, he texted me out of nowhere wanting to talk and saying he will pay me my money that he owes me. Now, one might feel it was hush money. However, he attributed his desire to talk to a dream he had, and he felt led to text me and to meet with me. Now, speaking of Levantre Andrews, let's go ahead and air this out real quick. If honest, Levantre and Larry would corroborate this one thing. I had no idea Levantre had accused Larry of molesting him two years later. To this day, I haven't received a clear answer from Larry or anyone in Larry's camp why no one told me when I was literally the guy that handled all of the, or most of the fires, rather, in the church. When Larry finally told me what happened around 2017 or something like that, 16 or 17, approximately 16 or 17, it was a very super generic story that I believed Levantre was lying because I remember Levantre being a lying teenager in the church. So I just chucked it off and went on about my business. After leaving the Larry Live community in 2018, someone prompted me, you need to go speak to Levantre. He feels like you helped Larry cover up his story. And I said, huh? So I reached out to Levantre just simply to let him know I didn't find out to many years later, only to realize that phone call brought me more than what I bargained for.
Once Levantre gave me his side of the story, significant parts of it startled me because it mirrored the same sexual experiences I had with Larry Reed. See, Larry is a voyeur. He loves to see people naked. Daquan recounts a time that Larry uh, purchased him new underwear and wanted to see him in the underwear. Levantre recounted a time where Larry asked him to clean up his room in his underwear. What Levantre didn't know up until now, and he still doesn't know he's hearing this while you're hearing this, I knew he was telling the truth the whole time. Because I too was requested by Larry to do the exact same thing many a times. Although I wasn't there, I said to Larry, as it relates to Levantre, here's what I said to Larry. Either you did something to Levantre or you provided the inappropriate details of your bedroom fetishes to a young member in the church. Either way, you are dirty, dog, wrong. One of the things that always bothers me about this Levantre is one thing and one thing only. When I talked to him back in 1718, he said something um, that was eerily similar to our experience. Mm -hmm. And I asked you about it and you said that you told him some stuff and yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, uh, even if that was just that, there was already a line crossed. Do you think maybe you can just let, let him have this and just let him filter out and fill it out. It's so interesting to see. Then what we're talking about in the park. Um, um, Marco said, he said, I, he said, I know you, y'all are going to be talking about other stuff. He said, but you need to ask me some of your things, certain stuff like this, make some good at what, what to do. But I don't think that would bode well in court because that admission could be seen as, well, if he was having an improper relationship with the assistant, why, why couldn't he have an improper relationship with the young, with the drunk? So it's, that's, that's a lot. It shouldn't have happened. And I told Larry explicitly, leave that boy alone. Now let me go deeper. No abuser operates alone. Right? He or she always has a network of people to help them be who and how they are, which is a monster. No abuser operates alone. There is always a network of people aiding and hiding their secrets and abetting in their schemes and dirty work. If you know you are or were a part of such a network, get out while you can. Shamak O'Brien, though he appears nice, is not innocent. In my opinion, you know what's worse than someone who stabs you in the back? That same person who hides the knife and helps you clean the wound. Shamako and Larry were boyfriends before I even got in the picture in 2003. And in my opinion, still maintain some sort of romantic understanding or committed relationship. For those who were around in the church days, Mako moved out and right after he moved out to his own apartment, I moved in to Larry's house. Mako did not like the fact that I was there because he knew Larry would eventually not keep his hands to himself and he couldn't do anything about it. So guess who had to pay for it because he could not control Larry? I did. Shamako found out about Larry and I when I told him in 2005 doing a ride back from Raleigh to Fedville. And here is how it happened. Prior to that, Mako and I, wanting to see each other naked, met at the then church musician's house, Antoine Shepard, while he was out of town. Mako, for whatever reason, had a key to Antoine's house. So we went there, stripped naked. We were young and dumb, giddy and childish, but hey, we did it. I thought it was a good time. We didn't touch each other at the time. We just saw each other naked. However, what I thought was Mako being fun 
and my friend in reality was him fishing for information on whether or not Larry and I was having sex. He was willing to do anything to find out. And of course, I told it because at the time I didn't know any better. Mako, as late as 2021, is still the same way, sneaky and sexually deviant. Yes, we flirted. We, I'm not, I'm not a superstar in this. He fondled me all the time, playing around, touching me in areas he shouldn't touch me. We've exchanged nudes. The Thursday before the Reformation experience in 2021, Mako masturbated in front of me on FaceTime while I watched. He asked me of my thoughts of a foursome between Larry, Kendall, Locklear, and myself. He said it was a fantasy of his. Well, I guess that's a fivesome or a quadruplet or whatever. It's five. He even admitted by being caught by Nathan Locklear's now incarcerated son, Day Day, at a meetup, a gay meetup spot off of Cheshire Bridge Road. Is Mako sweeter acting, portraying way more innocent in comparison to Larry Reed? Yes. But is he worse than Larry Reed, if you ask me? Absolutely. Now, I need to stop to say sorry to Latrice and Lisa. While at this time, and you both were being dogged by your ex-husbands for what y'all did or were doing, they did it first and literally continued to do it right up under your noses. And he was going in like, only thing we got in common is this is X, Y, D, Z, and this, right, this. And I'm like, what is you talking about? Mm -hmm. That's not a good look. And yeah, the way you was, try to say, I'm the queen of the family, that, that was degrading. It was disrespectful. The reality is that I don't, their timeline makes no sense to me. Um, when they say the relationship started and issues with Marco and Latrice's relationship, it's very strange. Um, because in my opinion, before we moved from North Carolina, this may not be true. But in my mind, they were already in a relationship under Michael's notes. So in my mind, I feel like they're not truthful. But they could be telling their truth. But from the outside looking in, it looks like you're grown enough to look back and see when this relationship started. Now, what you're telling us sounds good. But the reality is there was a connection, something drawn between y'all before then because you were spending a lot of time over there. And even from a professional standpoint, Felicia brought a broken relationship with her daughters to our church to be fixed. And Latrice was supposed to be one of the keys. That's why her and Felicia was connected. But when I began to notice something else going on, I told Latrice and Shamako in North Carolina a long time ago, I said, keep them at your house. I said, because there's something with lesbian doesn't connect to them. And I even put Felicia under that same, for lack of a better word, spirit, you know, because that's how I was communicating then. It was, all, it was you and another woman while you married. That should have never been. But it was, and that's okay. So when they tell this story like it's squeaky clean, I don't know who y'all want to believe that. I don't believe it. Let's talk about Kendall. Kendall is the same. Complicit and just a sexual promiscuous, allegedly. I've seen, uh, Kendall, I've seen you with my own eyes nude. You sent a nude to Mako. Mako showed it to me. It was a side profile of you. With your back arched and you're on all fours on your bed looking at the camera. I saw it. You know you took it. You didn't send it to me. How did Mako get it? Right. According to Mako, Kendall was caught sending his nudes all over Miami. When caught, Larry wouldn't fire him, according to what Mako told me, because Kendall knew too much. It was a liability to keep him and a liability to fire him. I told you this network is dirty, dark, and deviant. Nathan Locklear, I want to apologize for what I'm going to say next, but your business has been broadcasted to Marco, Kendall, and myself by, I guess at the time it was Apostle Reed, maybe it was Larry. He shared how you were the best dick sucker he's ever had or experienced. He also went as far as to share your uh, 
nudes with us. They were still shots of a video. I guess you were in front of Larry naked on FaceTime where, well, Larry was recording and sent us the still shots. Now, those of you that are viewers, you may not recognize this, what I'm going to show you, but Nathan knows his body and I'm sure Crystal does too. Prophet Philip McFeeders, pastor of Life Changers World Worship Center located in Louisville, Kentucky. According to Larry, Philip and him are also sexually active and emotionally entangled. Are you seeing this pattern? Why do I have a video of Prophet McFeeders drunk, stripping naked while entering a hotel room in Miami? Take a wild guess how I would get that video. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, how many do you get in the bed? <laughs> Go ahead and get in the bed. I'm getting in the bed. I'm about to go get in the bed. I text me in the morning, you wake up. Alright, love you too. <laughs> I thought you had to pee. I'm gonna pee when I get home. Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, honestly and sincerely, I would like to apologize to Philip and Nathan for them falling casualties in this messy web. But if I left them out of the extremes, the point of this video would be for not. I could go on and on. Junior, the bodybuilder, the, I guess, security, the masseuse, another sexual partner of Larry, According to what Larry told me this past April, April 2023, everyone in this picture are the ones I've just named. So if you want to know who is Larry having sex with or some kind of sexual immoral, immoral relationship with, look at those in his inner circle. Hmm. You, have, you ever wondered why Josh Merrill's or Cameron Phillips are never invited on these trips, and if they're invited, they never seem to go? Huh. Same for back in the church days. It was, men, it was the men right up under him. Not every man, but those who was close to him. Larry had inappropriate dealings with. I will name the full list later in the video, but Lisa, you remember when you stole the phone? You were texting the wrong men. Lisa, if you would have texted me what you text those other men, I would have responded. Lisa, you were right the whole time. Every time you were being gaslit for trying to break into his computer because you knew he was doing something wrong. It was Mako, it was Kendall. I was there, I saw it. He was doing it with me. He called you crazy. He talked about you. To this day, I've heard you make demeaning jokes about the time you lost your mind because you just knew he was cheating and you were never wrong. And I watched complicit as he made you look like a fool. And again, I say to you, I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. That someone is ill and they won't go to the doctor to take blood tests. And all of these women involved and all of these men involved, I advise you to go to the doctor and get all the blood tests. A close friend of mine, a pastor and evangelist in North Carolina, said she never trusted him. She never trusted Pastor Larry Reed, and she always thought that he was foul and demonic and diabolical. Sister, you are right. And I'm gonna call you right after I finish doing my show. And she told me over and over again, she cannot even watch any video with Larry Reed in it because it makes her sick to her stomach. So could it be, 
Was Carlton Pearson involved in this? Is T.D. Jakes involved in this? What is the real reason why he is so adamant in tarnishing Bishop T.D. Jakes' reputation and saying that he's a groomer and getting Manasseh Jordan and all these other people and giving these so-called receipts to make it seem that T.D. Jakes is a predator and that he had a relationship with P. Diddy. See, when you do evil to people and you keep trying to expose people, you try, you lied to Tasha Kay, you try to make her look bad, you try to make T.D. Jakes look bad, you're messing with E. Dewey Smith, you are harassing John Gray, you are harassing Eddie Long, uh, son, you were harassing the cigar blogger and um, what's his name? Uh, Marxist uh, in, out in California, the blogger's friend. You were harassing them. You were harassing the other friends of Daryl Moore, the cigar blogger. You were harassing and attacking anyone who questioned you. You said Levantra Andrews was a liar. You were covering for George Bloomer. And in many cases, Rita Rail Hill was like Olivia Pope. He's just like George Bloomer, the Olivia Pope in the male form. They go to churches and clean up the messes and they go back and tell people, uh, well, uh, to keep them quiet, um, you, you need to pay such and such so money, allegedly, to keep them quiet. Did you go to Bishop T.D. Jakes and tell what the people wanted to keep them quiet? How much money, allegedly, were you forced to pay to keep the stories off the internet and out of the news? Why was he so adamant in destroying Bishop T.D. Jakes? All of this has backfired on you. And I don't know how in the world you're going to get yourself out of this one. Lamar Whitehead said that there was a gospel artist that had AIDS. Check out his show. He said that there was a gospel artist that had AIDS and was with many pastors and preachers. And it's a shame that uh, he showed some man named Philip or Nathan. And these men, from what I gather, are married. All these women involved, children involved, you need to go to the doctor immediately. And this is so sad because your cover girls and your, your life is going to be destroyed. Your health is going to be destroyed because a man has been lying to you and having multiple partners all this time. And then you want to shame face people and call people all kind of liars and try to hurt them and get back at them to try to cover your own tracks. And you talk trash about Will Murphy. Or could it be that Bishop Will Murphy, Jamal Bryant, E. Dewey Smith, Keon Henderson, T.D. Jakes, and any other pastor you attack, did they all get together and pay V. Terrell Hill to out you today? Is that what this is? Or did you find out something that you could not get over and you had to out Larry Reed out for revenge? Or was it your guilty conscience and what you've done to other people and being complicit with the lies and the deception and putting people's health in danger and lives in danger. And uh, Bloomer is a trip because um, I, I've been to his church before several times. He overcharged charter schools uh, to use his building. Uh, he's all about money. He helps people cover up uh, there have been people who have accused him of indecent acts. And allegedly, he wasn't good to his wife as well. And he allegedly has a girlfriend. These people, they're not saved. Let, let's just go there. They're not saved. They're not. Stop giving them your money. And Whitehead was right all along. He tried to take Larry Reed down. He was right all along. So let's continue listen to. Only for the leaders of this organization are the head 
leader to splurge, wasting money, and from what I have heard, promise much to the members or the patrons, yet drop the ball, underperform, or never fulfill the said projects or promises. One example of wasted funds, you might have heard of a recent story of this guy, this former staff member called Lester Peltier. As it relates to all the rumors that be going on in folk mind, just be made up in their mind. I am single and I can do what the hell I want to do. But that ain't happening. Larry Darnell Reed. Mm -mm. No, that's no, 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 no. I wish I would be fooling up with a mentally ill, I'm talking about a lover of somebody that's mentally ill, poor, not American citizen. I, I just can't say what y'all think. Who y'all think I am? I, I don't understand that. Do you see my ex wife? Do you see the, the, I know there are beautiful women around me and beautiful men around me. Y'all see that? So then why am I going to go out and do that? Y'all just need to think just a little bit. I'm not having no, no lover that you had a fine in every way, shape, come on now. And I'm not taking care of you. That's not happening. Let me explain. Whoever I'm going to be with, I'm going to take care of them. But you need to be able to take care of your darn self if I was not in the picture what I'm saying. No, it's crazy. That is the dumbest thing in the world. He was put on staff to be a chef for the NBN network. Wallace, there was already a chef on staff, Latrice. Lester is now alleging that outside of the contract, which included housing, transportation, and a regular payroll, he was getting way more from Larry. This Lester story is not adding up, even when you hear it from Larry's mouth. Eventually, we end up. I was paying for some stay places, but like good money was tight. So I said, I can kill for that. You had to come to Atlanta. Right. So he came to Atlanta for the which was good because they got the country of marriage. And he was always into something. So it was time for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And Marco didn't want him gone, right? I mean, he always had one of old people there. Mm -hmm. And he left, he went to his aunt's house and took his stuff. But while he was there, just considering all the different stuff that was going on, Marco said, let's send the rest of his stuff there. You know, like, let's see so if we can stay a little bit while longer so we can just clear our mind and find out what we're going to do. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he started thinking, these people are trying to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. So he's in New York. I feel like we're trying to get rid of him. He flew back to Miami, but he ended up homeless because he had no money. Mm -hmm. And he got frostbitten bit and had to go to the hospital, so he gets mad. And guess who he called? Hmm. This shit. Oh, Jesus. Huh? We're going to check this out. So now here I'm seeing this on the phone. I'm like, I mean, let's see what happened. Oh, let me get to the phone call. So he calls Mr. Whitehead. Now we don't know any stuff that's going on. Come find out Mr. Whitehead was gonna pay him twenty thousand dollars up for him, twenty thousand the end. Flew him back to New York, put him in a hotel room for three days. He's gonna meet him at eight o'clock. He called us at six. All of us had blocked him. By this time because we were gonna make a crazy. Mm -hmm. But he didn't Michael didn't block. Him. Mm -hmm. So he called Michael mm -hmm. and he said, I'm about to um I got in contact with Bishop Blackhead. We're gonna do a story on Reed. And um, y'all push me to marry Latrice. He said all the stuff he needed to say to set up. Uh, like, 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 they're trying to get, we're trying to make it a federal thing. Uh, okay. And the well, Michael said, Well, why are you calling and telling me this? After you know this person, uh huh. How does one really call me? You know, I can't believe he gives it. I know this is not how he is. What's going on? But see, he, I, was t I was trying to tell him in November. So I'm like, I said, I'm doing it a whole lot. I can't, right. do, I can't right. take care of you and do what I can. I got to do. Right. And so, you know me. Marco called me and tell him what's going on. I said, OK, well, let me do that. Marco said, really? He just wanted to talk to me. I feel like you talked to him. This is the other kid around I said, I don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sit in front of me. 
I said, don't nobody make me try to make me do something. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm wrong. And I about to get up and he said, hum, 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 I sure can. He called my whole name. And it's like something just clicked. Mm-hmm. He said, listen to me, Larry, my name, me. Call me. So I grabbed the phone and I called him. And as soon as I put it the phone, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I, I got something to tell you. So, uh, Lamar, which is his first name, love my name. Right. I've been knowing him since 2019. He paid me to get close to you and get inside your business to find out who you are. So this had to let that whole thing go because he didn't go through. You know, so he apologized. I miss you here for where to stay close back my five Orlando. So I had um, Larry Lapp had some Mercedes right. in our apartment and in the book here. Now, why would you take care of someone whom you thought was betraying you? Up until April 2023, Larry and Lester were cool because I have the text messages where he was trying to recommend masseuses and Lester was one of the ones he was recommending. He was staying in the apartment financed by your seed sowing. Those of you that are part of Reformation Church. Doing what up until June before he was attempted to be kicked out? If you listen to Lester's story, there was no bad blood up until June of last year. The recording is in January of last year. So for six months, he was receiving money, something. If anything, lodging on you all's dime. And if patterns don't lie, Larry, your sexual involvement makes sense why you would have your cousin Latrice marry him. Because according to Mako, he never wanted to marry Latrice. But guess who pushed it and darn near made him do it? You did. You've used Latrice twice to lock your boyfriends in. And that's not nice. So, I asked Latrice, will she be interested in a contract of marriage? Yeah. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. She was like, okay, she made him, she liked him anyway. She said, okay, fine. You know, of course, she was never trying to have sex with him. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was just to have a friendship. Mm-hmm. Him and Josh didn't want to Allegedly, the NBN Network accountant or ex-accountant was stealing money. Hard-earned prophetic seeds. Patrons sold at the word of their prophet, Larry Reed. The accountant's name, the, the ex or former accountant's name is Eddie Banks. He was able to steal, according to what Larry told me, uh, $6,000 at a time. Now, Eddie, I'm not accusing you of doing it. You've got to go ask Larry why he would call and tell me that. All the trips that you've seen me on, I never paid a dime. Not a hotel room, not a meal, not a plane ticket. Thank you, sowers of the NBN Network. Every car they drive, the jewelry, clothes, and the houses of not just Larry, but partially the entire leadership is off of the back of the NBN church members, the patrons, the LRL platform supporters. And let me tell you, there's not one house owed. No one's paying mortgage. Your seeds are being poured into rent. Two houses in Atlanta, one house in Charlotte, one house in, at one time, two houses in Miami, one house in L.A. Over it was it was around about, 
I don't know the exact number, but I guarantee you it was near $60,000 a month at one time that your seed sowing was paying into rent for one man and his team. No one generates a real penny. No one is a true entrepreneur. No one is making a significant amount of money or living outside of the MBN network. It is all off of you. It's not even the YouTube views. They're not that high for him to be around so long. It's all off of you in the Reformation Church and in Patreon. We were watching a video. Uh, the producer and I was watching a video yesterday. And one woman sold into Larry and she said, Larry, I sent you all I got. And my heart almost broke because these people believe in you. And you are literally raising dark, deviant hell behind the scenes. And I know there are some that's going to keep on supporting you. But I'm just trying to just trying to help somebody not make a mockery or fool out of themselves any longer. Now, this doesn't include Cameron and Erica Phillips or Josh Merrills or Felicia and mostly Nathan Locklear. OK, these people are fairly smart and could leave the NBN network right now and live a healthy, profitable lifestyle. Everyone else needs your tithe in your offering or they wouldn't be able to sustain the life you're trying to sow to get. I have heard more than enough stories of people going broke, being unhoused, and utterly depressed because Larry teaches a type of gospel that subtly demands you give or sow at the powerless word of the prophet with no significant manifestation, which is then attributed to the era of the sower. And, and for what I understand, the response is, if you're not receiving blessings from your seed, there must be financial sin in your life. Well, can you guess what the solution is to the financial seed sin? Sow again. So you see the cycle? I sow, nothing happens. I feel like I'm sinning. So I sow, nothing happens. I feel like I'm sinning. So I sow, nothing happens. In the meantime, while you're going in that loop, they're in Aruba and Miami and here, excuse me, we were in LA. We were eating the best steaks off of that loop. I stayed in five-star hotels off of that loop. Some of this camera equipment I purchased off of that loop. I'm not a hero here. I'm a whistleblower. In my conclusion, I am a gay man. I've had my share of gay sexual experiences more than I would have liked to have. I have done everything that come to my mind outside of hard drugs. My nose, my allergies and sinuses will not allow me to do that. That being said, these men I named participating in gay sex, gay sex is not the issue. Outside of Levantre, these are grown men. The issue is the lies, deceit and hypocrisy as they talk about others while doing the same thing themselves. It's Larry dragging Lisa all these years on her mothering and leaving him for a woman when he never even fathered his kids. Kendall, Larry, Latrice, and Mako, and myself did. And you didn't have to leave her for a man. You kept the men in your house the whole time. It was Larry treating Latrice like she was a dirty dog and dragging Deja McBride's name in the mud for, uh, because Latrice was dating Deja, a younger member in the church, while having imp at least, the very least, an improper communication with Levantre Andrews. Also, at the same time, having sexual dealings with Shamak O'Brien, Kendall Peacock, Nathan Locklear, the Amario Hines, and myself, Vincent Terrell Hill. Now, I want to say sorry, the Amario Hines. I wasn't going to put your name in this because as far as I know, you don't deal with Larry anymore or that crew. 
However, your name was publicly put out by Del Quan, and I happened to hear the interview this morning. So I might as well confirm what Del Quan was saying. Larry told me himself that one day you came over the house, you laid on the floor, poked your booty out, and Larry dry humped you. And y'all did some other things, maybe some petting or something like that. That's what Larry told me. If it's a lie, go to Larry. If it's the truth, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the point is, this man is a dark, deviant, evil narcissist. In all of these cases, you all's names are dragged in it because he never cared about any of us in the first place. He is sick. These people that have accused him might be liars. They might not pay their bills. They might have issues. They might not be of character. But for the interviews that I saw or heard, none of those people have characterized Larry Reed wrongly. Just because, Larry, you can assassinate characters don't mean that your character is clean. Just because somebody don't pay their bills or they owe somebody money don't mean they're lying on you. Everybody is not lying on you. It's the fact that you act as if you've only tried being, you would, you would do it if you wanted to do it. These kind of soft launches so you can come back to your audience and say, oh, well, I told y'all, no, 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 no. Tell the truth. You kept a 13 year sexual relationship with me. You enjoyed it. You wanted it. And when I didn't want to give it to you, you demanded it. You like men more than you like women. Stop playing with these people. It's the fact that you have done stories on Brian Karn, E. Dewey Smith, Matthew Stevenson, Jamal Bryant, James Hall. I got to eat that one too. Some of these people we did stories together on. Daryl Walls and countless others while you are way more sinister and dark and deviant and ugly on the inside than they will ever be. This whole idea of the platform being about women and kids. How is that when the woman in your life you've mistreated ever since I've known you and her? And those kids you deal with when you want to deal with them. You all have been lied to. Oh, how can I forget T.D. Jakes? For peace sakes. Manasseh Jordan. If you are truly, truly trying to wave a banner of integrity or truth, discard your partnership with Larry Reed immediately or everyone that watches this, mark him as a false prophet, shearing the sheep for gain. If T.D. Jakes is truly guilty, he won't be brought down by the hands of thieves. And darkness cosplaying as truth and light is not how that works. Bishop Bernard Jordan, if you are as integral and truly a prophet as you say you are, you know I'm telling the truth. You know it. We're Gemini's. You know we don't. You know how we roll. Talk some sense into Larry, sir. If you don't, everyone watching this deem him a false prophet that would rather conveniently receive the seeds off of the back of the poor than to stand up. For innocent people who's been trampled over by a dark, deviant psychopath. Do what's right, Bernard Jordan. You know, I know you know it. I know you see it. I see that you see it. Do what's right. 
Now, let me speak to content creators because everybody getting this. I don't have no friends. Well, I got friends. But in context of this, I'm equal opportunist. I sat back and watched you all cover Larry's stories and make mockery of it. You sensationalized the abuse of others for clicks and views. You interviewed people who were not credible. You were so excited to tell the story. The real truth was lost amongst hours and hours of pointless banter, lots of shade and other nonsense in your YouTube and Facebook lives. You're wasting time. Stop manipulating the stories of manipulators to grow your channel. If you all would have simply done what I did today, just plainly just tell the story, it would not have been necessary for me to come out of retirement and do what I'm doing right now. To those who are watching, I got something to say to you too. God is tired of the lies. He's sick of the nonsense. Exposure is here. Leave other people's houses alone and get your house in order. Now, I know the majority of you came over here to be nosy. Hi, my name is Vitoril Hill, a soul healer. Welcome to Safe Space. But now that you're here, you are now accountable and responsible for your part in this. And make it seem like you're a good person. And then when there are stories you can't tell, you pass them on to Conscious TV. And you make everyone else seem like they're insane. But really, they're not. They're telling the truth. And the picture that B. Terrell Hill showed of those six guys they were in Dubai. The last known visit that I know Larry uh, Reed took was in the United Arab Emirates. He and his friends are in Dubai spending your money. I'm so glad I got out of his Patreon. I, I got out of it long time ago because I couldn't afford to pay that anyway. I'm so glad I didn't sell my hard earned money because I was trying to get help from my church. He wouldn't help me. And I know some other people who tried to get assistance and he wouldn't help them or help advertise their book or products. And to church people, I got to say, you got to develop your own relationship with God and stop flocking to and believe in every person that say they're a prophet. They're not a real prophet. If they don't address the sin in your life and areas you need to improve in, and if they can't discern and tell you who you are and what you are without you saying anything and without any, they're not a real prophet. A real prophet's words don't fall to the ground. My relative was a real prophet. For instance, he told this woman that his do her daughter had an abortion. Oh, my daughter didn't do that. Oh, my daughter didn't do that. And sure enough, she found out later on her daughter did just that. He prophesied to me that a certain person was going to harm me and that they were not my friends. Three years later, three years later, that became evident. He told another woman, if you put your husband in that home, he's going to die because he wants to be with his family. And she did not listen. She walked out the church, put her husband in the home because she wanted to live her life and date other people while her husband was incapacitated or whatever she wanted to do. And that man was dead within days. And who knows if she had listened to my relative who is a true prophet of God, he might have been alive today. So we've got to stop being so needy and wanting to listen to prophets. And these people are nothing but narcissists taking your money. Stop giving your rent money to these people. Stop giving your utility bill and your grocery money to these people. 
Get in your word and pray and submit to God and to the truth of God and develop a relationship with God for yourself. And if you're not going to a church where you say, ouch, sometime, you just go into a church where it just satisfies your ears and doesn't convict your flesh, you're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong church because we got to be pruned and prepared for the master's use. And I also want to say that Shamako Bryant's father was a pastor. And allegedly, Larry Reed told on Shamako's father because Shamako's father was having an affair or doing something inappropriate. And he told his bishop or his uh, whoever was over him, his overseers on him. And Larry Reed ended up having that church. So he's been backstabbing people from day one. And it's so sad because Alyssa Dunn was his cover girl. Latrice knew she was a cover girl because she liked women. And how many of you other women are cover girls? Now let's look at what Larry Reed was going to say to justify. And I feel really sorry for Levantre and all the victims that Larry Reed, George Bloomer, and all these other people are responsible for destroying their lives and their childhood. I'm praying for you because no one should be inappropriately touched by an adult. To learn about who I am. Anyone who believes something that is way less than integral way less than honorable, mean-spirited, or any of those things about me. They just ain't my audience, and I'm okay with that. And I want every YouTuber, I would call your name to shout you out, but I ain't going to do that. I want every YouTuber that normally run me into, I mean, just, and you just go on and on and on and on. Interview who you want. Just please spell my name right. Cause I don't know why some y'all ain't been to school. Some of y'all say R I E D. What? What? You didn't watch basketball. You you want into entertainment? L A Reed. What? What is you doing? It's R E I D. Spell it right, and then make sure you drop my link to my channel. And then when they get there, then I can do the rest and get the people who belong to me where they need to be. I need for y'all to do that. Anyway, so number one reason, probably the top five, that I'm doing this live in spite of my profit. And somebody may say, Larry, you're setting a bad example. You need to have a profit in your life. Well, they didn't say thus said the Lord. If they had said the Lord said not to say something, then I wouldn't be saying nothing. <laughs> But they said, I don't think you should. And then Bishop poured the chart, the stars, Manasseh didn't want he done, you know, and they're like, um, I don't think you should say anything about this, but I feel like I should. Number one, because there's no new truth to learn about me. And I've been terribly transparent. That goes to number one. Number two is it involves other people that I love, listen to what I'm saying, people that I love, people that are in my life or were in my life. And I, I, don't, I don't like it. And if you follow my platform over the years, the last four years between December and February, I've been attacked horribly on the platform with accusations, lies, and whatever. And the only time I speak out is when it's involving people that's close to me and when I feel like I, I really need to. Um, and I feel like I need to. So I am going to address this. But I'm not going to address everything out here in a messy, mean, triggering way because I know 
the internet. Most of the people that are in, on the internet, and I hate to say it like this, I ain't gonna say most, but there's a faction or fraction of people that are on the internet who are mentally ill. And I don't want to give them something to feast off of for the next year, like they have the last four. So I'd rather talk to people that got a little bit of sense. And another thing is this, Larry Reed, because this was said in Vincent's video that I'm taking money from the poor. <sighs> Y'all know I don't like that. That's why I answered Tasha K when she said I was buying my then wife, Elisa, Hermes bags with the ministry money. I don't like that because I'm a fundraiser, front man. Every pastor is a front fundraiser, front man for a nonprofit. And this nonprofit have contractors that I fulfill their contract at the end of the month. The ministry does. They have families. They have businesses. And I know the MBN pays well. So I know they got other clients, which they, someone said that those that are contractors that I am their only client may not be saying this right that I am their only client, so they can't say certain things or something like that. That is not true. That's 100%, 100% not true. There is no contract that, that I have, to my knowledge, that I am their only client and I'm the only person fulfilling their invoices. That is not true. There is no spiritual community that I am the head of that is not safe. And last night, this is interesting. It's coming to my mind. Last night when we were together for midweek and I began to talk about how I was so amazed at energetically when we come together several times a year. And this has been something I've always wanted to do. I wanted to create a community like this. And now I have done it and it's growing. And how touched I was in my heart. And then today and then all of the birthday love and send people love on Carlton, and then the event thousands came out. It was successful. And then people reminded me this morning, so you know, Vincent's first video was actually on the day that you did Carlton Pearson's event. He advertised it for a week or two. I said, oh, I see. It's unfortunate, and I don't like it, that other people are having their name dragged into the relationship that Vincent is disgruntled concerning that's professional and personal. I hate that the disgruntledness he has towards me on a personal and professional level is affecting people that have nothing to do with any of this. These people have families. They have children. <laughs> oh my God. And they told me they put he put up a video of one of the contractors who's also my friend and like a family member and said, well, his face ain't in it, but his wife will know his body. As if to I don't even know what that is about. What that don't have nothing to do with me. So I know that's personal because I, I do know that he did not care for him. And it was because of how close our relationship was. And ultimately, when you have a community like I built and the way that I built it, every person feels as though, and it's true, that they have their own personal relationship with me. And that is exactly how it is. And it's very true because I'm very personable. And there have been times when people would get terribly upset at the other person because I may have taken up more time with this one and that one, however. And whenever that happened, bruh, it can get very interesting since the reason why I don't miss pastoring the way I used to pastor. But the way I pastor now is a whole different ballgame. So let me be very clear. And I know people are going to chop this up and come up with some other stuff. 
the whole reason I'm doing this, mind you, my mentor and every prophet in my life, even some of my partners, Lisa told me not to do it. Shamako told me not to do it. That's in addition to my partners, you know, in Patreon. Lisa told me not to do it. Shamako told me not to do it. Who else told me? A few people told me not to do it. But it's involving other people, so I got to make it really clear. So the reason that I'm addressing this is the same reason that I addressed Tasha K when she interviewed my former church member. Before I am an entertainer, before I'm an artist, before I am an author, an actor, and a coach, I am and have been a pastor and prophet to literal thousands in this country and in other countries. And these people' names are being brought up in families. And I want to say this, I am terribly sorry that my own personal choice to mentor at first, then employ, there's a position in the church, but it won't really like an official employment, but there was compensation. And then later on, befriend Vincent Hill. Hold on, I skipped the part. Before we, at the same time we started being horizontal friends, I started the Larry Live show. Oh, let me talk about that too. But hold on, let me finish this statement. I'm sorry that that choice I made in my personal life and then professionally, as relates to professional relationship with Vincent, is negatively affecting your memories that you have built inside of the Breakthrough Church when it was in North Carolina. And those of you that have benefited from any and everything that I have done because a negative light is being cast upon it as if it's inauthentic and it's false. I mean, I guess that's okay because those that were there know better. Those that know me no better. Those that chart my prophecies and my lifestyle and how I live, they know better. Am I perfect? Hell, I'm not perfect. I mean, but I don't mind saying that and I will tell you. So <laughs> that is just that. Now, what's the thing I said I'm going to get back to, Nancy? And I had to finish that statement. Oh, this part. I was told I had somebody to watch the video and give me all of the things that they said. And, and I'm just not addressing everything. I'm Because all of this, in my opinion, is I think Vincent is working through grief, the grief of separation from me and the grief of separation from the group. There's a group of us called me, Vincent, Kendra, and Mako, and Lotlier was like two peas in the pie. We were all going through in our personal life and we were hanging on to each other. So if some of us got some money, well, Lotley started going through something with his wife, so he fell off a little bit. So us four were like two peas in the pod, and we shared everything. There was nothing hidden from each other about each other personally, and what we were going through as a result of being post the first 20 years of traditional church. And, uh. I hate it. I can't tell you. I hate it. I'm not going to hide it. I don't like this. I don't, I don't like to talk about him or anybody in my community like this. I just don't. I had a situation with somebody that was connected to my Patreon community and, and things didn't go right. I still love her, but things didn't go right where I couldn't you know, use it the way I was using it before, but I still love her. And I never came out here publicly and discussed it. I discussed it in Patreon. And I even handled that in a certain way. And I lost a couple of high donors because I didn't handle her in a certain way. I just ain't going to do that with somebody that I love. So I really, really, really hate it. When Larry Reed Live started, Vincent was an intricate part of Larry Reed Live. Let me tell you how and why. I had been blessed out of my London church with a brilliant family called the Creeries, Charlton and Elaine. They were key players in the vision that God had gave me 
and the way I was doing it at that time, even when it comes to the school, because we had built the school and all of the kids got in the school. And, and Charlton was a tech whiz. And man, with him, and I think Vincent was able to do some stuff at the time, but he was in, beginning to learn even more. And them together, they are responsible technically for the technicalized stuff. They're responsible. They are responsible for me being able to go live in a professional studio setting. Now, if you follow me, I have been going live. Somebody may be listening to my, when you're going to get to it, I'm giving you the context. I'm telling you what there is to tell <laughs> because this relationship was professional and it was personal. And if you watch reading things my way, you know that he was a part of the community professionally and like family. So I'm not going to get up here. Like I said, I know his mom, I know his dad, I know his sister, and I'm not going to drag him. However, I am going to tell everything, everything to those that are close and they already know anyway. So getting back to what I said. So Charlton and Vincent, when I will come to the office every day, if you've been following the platform, you know all of this, what I'm saying, because I will be live all the time and they'll be right there. And I will go down to what's that Atlanta station, Atlantic station. I will, that's where the office was. And then we had one and then we ended up getting two because we were growing and, had, and more people were coming out there to help us work at Lane Charlton, da, da, da. And I was trying to do interviews. Lisa was on the show, Larry Live during those times. And they're responsible for me going live and doing this like a studio type thing. Not one like this, but it was nicely done. And I say thank you to, to Charlton. I say thank you to Vincent. And I want to say this to Charlton if he happened to see this. I would love to honor you the way that I honored Vincent for being there for me when I first started Larry Reed Live and doing that work. I, you would have been compensated, but not at the level I can do now. I mean, I, I, mean, I got some money, but I'm not like where I want to be. But anything y'all will need, hit me up and, and let me know because I did the same thing for Vincent. So let me back up and then come up. I got to tell y'all about our relationships. You understand how, why this is, affects me the way that it does. Now, woman is in Fayetteville. How old was I? Jesus. I was in my 20s. I had to be. This may have been in 2002 or three. Long time ago in 99, I had a member, James, from Holy Temple in Fremont, North Carolina. I've been knowing him since he was a child. And he was going to Fayetteville State University. And when somebody said, Reed is baking a cake, gathering all the ingredients. I'm telling you what you need to know and who this is and why this. Oh, thank you. You like my shirt. It's a whole outfit. And why this, I don't like it because I don't like talking about people that I love from my community on my platform like this. And it's because it's, it feels negative. Okay. So anyway, so he was telling me about this. Some guy on the campus named Bishop. And they call him Bishop. He was a coded boy that's like really into the church and stuff. And he said, they call him Bishop, said, but he don't feel like he is that. And he said, Reed, I want you to see them because I know you're a prophet. And then you, you know. Oh, that is Kevin Woods. How you doing? Kevin used to live in my house as a child. Well, not as a child. Let me fix that because they got lies on that. As a teenager, him and his mom, him first and his mom later on. All right. But anyway, that's somebody that knows me since the 90s. How, but Kevin, you were young. You were really young. You, you may have been like 16. But anyway, or 17. How old were you? Let me get back to my topic. Kendra, keep me on topic. You know, I just go to talking. And I don't need to be looking in the chat because then I start talking. Yeah, I'm going to talk about how LRL began. Kendra, do not, you got to get in the right spirit so you don't be leading me astray. I can look at you till you're upset. <laughs> Well, calm down. I mean, what's the point? I mean, what in about a month or two, this is going to be gone. You were 15 when I met you in that. Yeah, that's right. Also, I've been saying um, Cameron is the youngest person I ever mentored. He was 17 when I came. But it's you, Kevin. At 15 years old, you're the youngest. 
So anyway, um, <laughs> drop that member off, James. And he said, there he go. He was hanging out the window. I said, no. I said, no. I said, he ain't nobody bishop and he got some issues. What I didn't know. So what ended up happening was somebody said, Larry looking all svelte and modest, um, modelish. That's right. I'm back to my regular size. Y'all met me when I was swole up and I got big as, on, as I want to be. But now I'm back to my regular size. Okay, so anyway, um, James went and told him, and this, and I was living in Fayetteville. I went to my mama house. James was to get my mama house number, called it my mama house, said, you, I heard you said that I want that. Da, 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 da. I said, who are you? I said, I'm Bishop. Da, da, I'm Benson. Da, da, da. And I can't remember what I said, but whatever I said on that phone call, he never forgot me. And oh, Nancy, text in the thing and ask, text Mark and ask Mark to give you the letter I sent him that Marco sent me a picture of that Benson sent last last um last year. Okay. Kind of and put it in here. So I need, I can make all this make sense. And so whatever I said on that phone call made Vincent not forget me. And his mom and them. Long story short, he was doing some stuff for them, and it was a lot for him to take on. And so he went on a fast. And on this fast, he was praying, praying, praying. He was 10 days in. He went down Murchison Road, looked up in the sign, and he saw Reed. He said, that dude's last name was Reed. And he came and knocked on the door. But let me tell you what happened with me. I woke up that morning. Spirit said, there's somebody that's supposed to meet you. Go to the church. I woke up, went to drop off my computer to get fixed, which is across the street from my church, went in the church. By the time I walked to my office, Vincent's knocking at the door. He came in, we had a conversation, and very quickly, he just began to tell me everything that he was going through. Now, let me explain the kind of person I was at that time. At that time, I was still captain save a stranger who. And so anything and anyone, and even if an animal needed help, a homeless person or somebody on the side of the road, I was picking them up. I was, I thought this is the way that I was supposed to do it. So I probably should have had more boundaries, but I didn't. And I did not create boundaries really until 2022. Now that's the truth. And that may make you feel, oh my God, Larry, true? Hell yeah. My patrons know because I tell them everything. And I didn't have any boundaries. Because of that, and Benson is not the only one, people who have been in my close proximity, people who have worked for me in the recent years as a contractor, and I say for me, but it's really for MBN. I have had people to work for me separate from MBN, but their contract is the MBN. Being close to me and being friends with me and being in my air, and you get certain benefits, you get certain access. And so many times, more than one time, people have gotten really, really caught up with me personally. And as a result of me not giving these people what they want, I end up being the devil. In Vincent's case, I have given nobody more. Nobody more than Vincent. I even after he left, y'all remember we're doing, I even had him on Larry Live with me, 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 him, and Lisa. Then Lisa left and then Vincent left. I had him on the platform with me and y'all saw when he left. And oh, 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 oh I see what part you're talking about. If he want to take credit for starting Larry Reed Live and it been his brainchild, I don't have a problem with that. That's his story. That's not my story. And if you just check the YouTubes and um, Facebook, I wish Social Cam was still up. Periscope, is it still up? You'll see that, that just doesn't, it just doesn't line up. Um, I've been talking online publicly um, for Jesus. I think I started in 2001. And it just grew, 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 grew. I didn't start Larry Live to 2016 as far as the logo and it looking all beautiful and stuff like that. But I've been online doing Larry Reed 
since Jesus was a baby. Okay, so anyway, where am I in this door? Now, do you notice he's deflecting? I think he's deflecting. What do you think? A narcissist. He just doesn't admit to doing anything wrong. And basically making it seem like Vincent Terrell Hill is some type of stalker and some type of jilted, obsessed person. What do you think? I don't buy it. Who's the dummy now, Larry Reed? 